Hi, everybody. Welcome to day three of this three day eco printing boot camp. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist based in rural Southeast Ireland, and I'm developing a sustainable textile practice. And what that actually means is becoming more health conscious and environmentally mindful in everything that I do. And eco printing without using traditional powdered mordants, without using those chemicals, really makes sense to me, as does upcycling clothing, keeping things in that circular economy, and foraging locally or growing your own plants to print your textiles. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not wearing an eco printed top. I've literally just popped out of the bath. I do have two eco printed uh, bracelets on. Uh, I was just very, very warm and I grabbed the first thing that came to hand. But eco printing is just a marvelous way of adding the most beautiful color and prints to all your garments and fabric. And I'm going to take you through step by step today how you would do that. So if you'd like to drop a comment into the chat, Shona will be able to work out then. Uh, we can see where people are tuning in from. We do hope afterwards to make a little graph so we can see all the different regions throughout the world where you're joining. Uh, you may be living in a different time zone and watching on the replay, but please feel free to drop that in. And Shona is uh, here. Shona is helping behind the scenes. Hey, Shona. And Hi, uh, she's gone over the border from uh, Switzerland. Shona, where are you tonight? Um Nicola, I think I'm in France. I actually am not too sure at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Shona thinks she's in France. Uh, her her van, which was having some work done, has been repaired. So thanks, Shona. And um, as I mentioned on session one and session two, Shona will be fielding comments for me in the background. So if you have a question, you can drop it in the chat when I ask for questions and you can put three question marks at the front and at the back. And Shona will be able to identify those for me and highlight them so that I don't have to worry about trying to read every single comment in the chat while I'm trying to actually talk to you and do my presentation. But also if Shona makes a reply to you, you are going to see that reply with my name on it. So it will look as if I am writing the reply, but that's actually Shona. So each of the three sessions, while it is a standalone session and, it, it, you know, the information stands by itself, if you're new to eco printing, you really need to watch boot camp day one and day two, and then this video day three, before you start eco printing, because there are many of the answers to questions you may have will be contained in day one and day two. But what I do want to say is that everything I share about upcycling garments and eco printing, it applies whether you are printing fabric that you intend to sew with, or whether you print your felt, whether you print a garment, or whether you deconstruct a garment and then you choose to upcycle it and make different actual pieces from the finished fabric that you are printing. So the essence of what I do and to work in an environmentally mindful and health conscious way, it's working without traditional powdered mordants. And a mordant is a metal salt, it's a chemical, but it's a metal salt and it's used traditionally to prepare fabric to help the fabric receive the natural dye from the plants. And if you're wondering how working in the dirty pot replaces uh, the natural mordant or how it actually replaces it, there's a phrase some of you may be familiar with, and that is called pot as mordant. And so what that actually means is the composition, the metal composition of the pot that you use to process your bundles in, that influences several things in your finished eco printed item. It influences the color, 
it influences how light fast it will be, how wash fast it will be, and how it will stand the test of time. And without traditional powdered mordants, much vegetation does not actually give any colors whatsoever. It needs the chemicals to fix the color. So if you are new to using the dirty pot and working with that pot as mordant, you could be a totally new eco printer or you could be coming from um, a textile practice where you're used to using the powders. If you are starting the dirty pot process, I just encourage you not to deviate from what I recommend and show you today. I recommend that you just keep it really, really simple if you want to get good results, because every single thing, if you put one extra leaf into your pot, a leaf that I don't recommend, there's a very good chance that you will not get the results that you want. And you need to trust me on that. I've literally shared this process with thousands of people now worldwide online and many people are getting the most extraordinary results they're total textile professionals now they have their own businesses they're teaching they're selling their work but they are people who've got the foundations locked in and then they've gone in their own direction based on a solid foundation it's very easy to get um so overwhelmed by all the information out there. And if you don't understand the basics, it, it's really difficult to um, get going. So I'm just going to remind you how you would set up your dirty pot. The pot that I recommend is aluminum, or you may say aluminum. You have a large pot. Now, the larger your pot, the better. And it's always better if your pot is wide, and slightly shallower rather than a pot that contains the same volume of liquid that's taller and narrower. You can get more pieces into the wider, shallower pot, even if it has the same volume of liquid. And you need a lid for your pot. Now the heat source that you use, I like to use gas or wood. Um, I like to process in a well-ventilated space. That's really important. But I'm quite aware that many of you are working in a kitchen, maybe in an apartment. So in that case, you need to have your windows open, ventilation, you need a mask on, and you can process successfully. But it is something just to be aware of when you're working in a reactive pot and adding in rusty metal, and maybe you're using rust water, you need to be aware that you are better to have a mask on and you definitely need ventilation when you're working inside. So I'm going to recommend that you work with an aluminium pot, but if you can't access an aluminium pot, I mean, a cast iron pot is fantastic, but that does make things very dark. It's my personal preference, but not everybody else's. Copper is very slow reacting. It, it will react better than a stainless steel pot, but it's not a good pot for a beginner when you're eco printing. However, if it's what you have, please feel free to use it. And add some crumpled up tin foil or aluminium foil, or maybe a turkey roasting tray as we discussed yesterday. Crush that up and put it in your pot. You can also use a turkey, I think you call it a turkey fryer in America. You can use a crock pot, a pressure cooker, but it's essential not to use the equipment that you're going to be subsequently preparing food in. You should have different equipment for eco printing or any sort of dyeing than you use to cook your family's food in. Now, I would say I wouldn't have a problem doing one or two pieces if I only used onion skins in one of my cooking pots, but it's not good practice. So it's much better to have a separate pot. So you're going to have your aluminium pot. You're going to half fill it with water or three quarters fill it with water. I recommend you add a pint or half a liter of vinegar into the water. And it doesn't matter what sort of vinegar it is, whether it's white, malt, red wine, apple cider. Any sort of vinegar is perfect. So add a chunk of rusty metal and half a liter or a pint of vinegar into your pot. 
And if you don't have a chunk of rusty metal, something like an old iron or a horseshoe works really well. I wouldn't recommend that you add little nails in because that might snag your fabric. But if you get um, the scrubbies that you use, metal scrubbies that you use to um, maybe clean a saucepan that's got some baked on grease or a cooking pot, you can actually add new ones of those in, providing they have no soap in them, obviously. And uh, they will also work really well instead of the rusty metal and they will rust with time. And there's optional vegetation for adding additional depth of color. And the only vegetation, and I'm, I cannot stress this enough, the only vegetation that I recommend is any part of the eucalyptus tree. So that could be leaves or bark or twigs or flowers or seed pods. You can put any part of the eucalyptus in or you can put onion skins in. And I don't care how many times you ask me, can I put um, oak? Can I put walnut? Can I put catalpa? My answer is going to be the same. No, no, no. Because what happens is all those other high tannin rich leaves will have a reaction with your rusty metal. And the pot liquid is going to look dark anyway. But if you've always already had a tannin and iron reaction in the pot, you're going to get totally different results with your eco printing. And you may discover just everything looks so dark that it's horrible. I've tried and I wasn't happy with it. So if you want results similar to the results that I get, you're going to have to do what I do. And uh, in Europe, we're quite direct. So I would just say you need to do what I do. But we're all adults. If you do something different, you need to expect that you may get a different result. Okay, so um, I am going to take you step by step through eco printing. This first little set of images is actually through, it's eco printing um, a piece of felt. And some of you who've been following me for a while may have seen these images before, but the foundations of eco printing do not change. They never change in the dirty pot. So I'm sharing slides that I have shared with some of you before, but I also have some new ones later on. So I think it's a good time just to say that if you have a question about what I've said so far, please just drop it in as a comment now. And I'm just going to quickly quickly flick down and see are there any questions Sharon's question is can you talk about printing on handmade Nuno felt you're going to see my first um my first series of images Sharon shows me eco printing on felt every sort of fabric whether it's felt whether it's linen whether it's silk whether it's cashmere it doesn't matter what the fabric is gets the same, the, the eco printing process after you have prepared the fabric is exactly the same. So the only difference with, with um, felt and protein based fabric is that you prepare it with a vinegar soak or sprinkle beforehand and with the cellulose fabric with rust water. I'll talk about cellulose in a minute. But you prepare your felt, Sharon, exactly the same as if it was wool or cashmere. So thank you for asking that question because other people may be wondering as well. And you're going to see me going step by step through eco printing a piece of that. Um, now, Annika has a question about will the chat also stay next to the video because of the tips? I think if you're watching Annika on YouTube, it does. But I honestly... I'm not 100% sure. I really don't know. But if you've actually registered for the boot camp and the registration link is in the, the um, video description uh, below the video, if you look back on YouTube afterwards, if you register and you're on my newsletter list and you've opted in for the boot camp, I will be sending everybody out a thank you gift in about a week or 10 days time. And that will contain a lot of information that was shared during this, just, just bullet points and resources for you, 
links to some interesting articles, suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. So register and then you will have the information I think that you need. So I'm just flicking down. Um, so red or white onion skins. Um, I, I'm not sure if you call what we in Ireland call brown onions, but you're going to see me using them in a minute. In a minute. For me, white onions, the skin looks white and I've not got prints from them. But red and brown onions, the skins give excellent prints. And then how much water your pot contains is an issue. The bigger your pot, the better. So I recommend, if possible, that you at least half fill your pot with water when you're setting it up for the first time. Add your vinegar and then you're going to boil it for an hour before you put your bundles in. But once you put your bundles into the pot, they need to be covered by the pot liquid. So it will, may be necessary to add more water into the pot. And Beatrice is asking, is it onion skins or eucalyptus leaves, or can you mix them? Another great question. Thank you for asking that, Beatrice. You can mix them. However, onion skins do something called exhaust. It's a little bit like if you're really tired, you go, oh, you're exhausted. And onion skins exhaust. They release all their color in the eco printing pot very, very quickly. And that color is absorbed by whatever you are printing very, very quickly. So it, for a beginner, I would just put them in at the beginning. But it's important to note then that their color will all be released and you would need to remove them and add more onion skins the next time you were printing, whereas the eucalyptus leaves will continue to give color for a few sessions. OK. <laughs> Marianne is asking, can you put in too much eucalyptus or too many onion skins into the pot? And my simple answer is no, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and um, now I'm not 100% sure. Um, we might, we would say, I have a friend who has a name like this, and in Ireland we say Jan for this, but it could be Jeannie or Jean. But, um, do any type of eucalyptus work well? So, any variety of eucalyptus at all works very well for adding into your pot for developing the dirty pot liquid. But different varieties of eucalyptus give different colored prints when you're actually using them to eco print with Jan. So I actually have a YouTube video and a PDF that you can download. If you look at my other YouTube videos, obviously once this one is over, and I have just information about eucalyptus varieties that give red eco prints for me. And the, the varieties that I recommend actually in the video, they are all growing here in Ireland. I've planted them on my property and I've used them in other countries as well. So I can be very confident that those specific varieties give extremely good prints. Um, so, no, Carolyn, we're working without traditional powdered mordants and don't think I haven't tried it at the beginning. You will get different results if you add ferrous sulfate. So I encourage you not to. I, and I can't give you uh, any recommendation on how many grams. No, if you do, if you want to work in this way in the dirty pot and you don't have rusty metal, just omit it, work without the rusty metal. But I recommend you just get something like a spanner or anything that you can pop in and that you don't use ferrous sulfate. You will get different results, slightly different results. Um, Tracy is asking, what are the fabric preparation options for a sweater made from silk and cotton? So I did mention yesterday, Tracy, that I don't recommend printing or, or the, it's not that you can't print a sweater made from silk and cotton, but you, you may be disappointed in the results. Um, cotton does not take the color anything like as easily as silk. And you're going to compromise something because if you prepare your fabric as you would for a silk garment, which would be using the vinegar, that will not help at all with the cotton and, and your prints won't be very good. 
If you dip the fabric in the rust water for the cotton, that would be the better option, but you won't get such colorful prints. So if you have a garment of your own that you want to upcycle, I would say certainly go ahead and do it, but don't expect the depth of color and the strength of the prints if you use the vinegar solution. And then if you use the rust water, you can expect darker and not such colorful prints. Um, now, I just want to remind you, Aksha has asked a question here. So I'll just remind you, if you do have a question, it just happens that I've seen this and Linda has one coming up as well. Please, please, can you, so that Shona can find your questions for me. When you are asking a question, put question marks in front and behind because otherwise your question will probably be missed. However, I did see um, this one here. Yeah, Aksha, if you register using the link in the video description and Shona, please could you pop that into the chat now? I will be sending out information afterwards, but this is a free boot camp. I am actually um, at the end of today. I'm going to give you some information about my $49 event that's launching tomorrow. And that's where you have loads of access to me back and forwards. But I will be sending out helpful information to those of you who have registered. So make sure to register using the link. Thank you, Shauna. And that is that in the comments now as well, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Can you use satin material like from, yeah, if it's silk, absolutely, Linda. If it's a polyester and not a pure silk, I would just say forget it. No. But if it's silk, absolutely you can. Um, okay. I'm just going to check um, down here and just see are there any more um questions i want to move on and show you the step-by-step -step, uh, little pictures but let me just see so um coney damsel is asking will the amount of water um in the dirty pot affect the results the biggest issue is if you do not have enough liquid in your pot you run the risk of the bundles getting hotter in certain areas and getting stripes across your fabric and them not um not eco printing as evenly. Um, but if you dilute the pot liquid, because we're boiling for a longish period of time, so long as you have some vegetation and iron, it's not like it's going to have a lesser effect. But sometimes what will happen is you're, if you have very, very, very strong um, dark pot liquid, you may prefer to dilute that. So put some in a bucket and keep it for another time and dilute it because you may find the prints are too dark. Okay. Um, Agnes, thank you. So I do have an ebook um, that you can order online. It's not really the topic of this, um, this, but it's a really, really step-by-step -step, simple foundation ebook where you can then have a reference for everything that I am sharing here. Um, Sharon is saying uh, that the wedding dress idea sounds great. I have eco printed a beautiful silk Devore um, Deb's dress uh, with sequins, and that was absolutely fantastic. Um, Sarah, we need to have, Sarah's asking, is there a substitute for rust water on cellulose? This is a free boot camp, and the information in this boot camp is all about rust water. But Sarah, in your library, in our membership club, there are the alternatives for using for getting different colors and everything. So we should have a conversation next week when this week is over because I have thousands of emails coming in each day and I'm going to probably miss yours. We need to do that next week. And Sean, if you could remind me, please. Linda has a question um, about using synthetic fabrics. Should it be used as animal or plant-based? Not putting synthetic fabrics in, Linda, full stop. Working in an environmentally mindful way. I don't mind a small bit of a polyester trim on something, you know, piece of lace or something if the rest of the garment is silk or wool, but I don't um, eco print on um, synthetic fabrics and, and things like polyester don't take the color. Having said that, I tell a slight um, fib 
because nylon does take the color well. So if you have nylon, you can treat the nylon um, as if it was protein based. Okay, so now um, there are some things coming in and um, there, here's one, it, it, the pot lid, it doesn't make a difference if it's not aluminium. I mean, it might make a slight difference, but very subtle. You just need a lid on your pot. Um, and then there are a couple of questions that will be answered in a minute, so I'm not going to answer them now. So I'm going to move on and share me, just some images of me doing a piece from start to finish. So this first image here, uh, I'm about to work on a piece of felt. And so I have, I was going to do a few pieces. So I have everything in front of me that I actually need. The session yesterday told you how to prepare your protein-based fabric before you eco print it. So I already had made my felt. I had soaked it overnight in plain water. So it was lovely and damp. And then on my table, I have some vinegar. I have a copper pipe and a cast iron pipe. I have some scissors. I have some string and I have a towel. And aside from my dirty pot and my cooker, that's all I need for the moment. And the vegetation that I used for this piece, it was a sample. Uh, I, at the moment, you can see I'm sprinkling something. That's a little sprinkle of black tea. And then the skins that I'm using there are what we call brown onion skins. So maybe somebody might write in the comment for me because I would be interested to know, are those what you call white onions or because we have onions that are very white, or are those called brown onions wherever you live? So maybe if some of you would drop a comment, it will answer that question for me. And if you can see that bottle with the darker um, browny black liquid in it, that's actually my vinegar that I sprinkled onto the felt. So the felt was damp and I sprinkled that vinegar, brown vinegar on, and I'm only putting vegetation on one half of this particular sample. And then I folded it over. So the sample is opened out and I folded it over. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding some vegetation on this upper side of it. Now with felt, the felt is, is much thicker than wool or silk or linen. And even if it's a fine, if it's Nuno felt, it may not be, but if it is a thicker piece of felt, such as something suitable for a, uh, a beautiful table runner, for example, where you might want to put some hot, um, some hot pots on. The onion skin prints in the middle are not going to really come through to this upper side. So I wanted to put, there'd be a subtle influence of color, but very little. So I wanted to put some leaves here. So I have a selection um, of sycamore leaves, of blackberry leaves, and near my hands, right where the copper pipe that I'm rolling up on is going to go, I have a rose leaf. So this is the simplest um, way of printing something. If you have a very narrow piece, you, you don't have to fold it in half, but I wanted to show that you could print both sides and you could get different effects on both sides and um, roll it up with a copper pipe. And it is important that if you roll on a piece of metal, you understand you will get modification of color from the metal, but you can roll your bundles tighter and then you have to make sure that those pipes are going to fit into your pot. So here I am pulling and tying really tightly. So as I was rolling up, I would roll an inch or two, put my hands on the vegetation, pull it and roll up. But what happens is if I lifted my hand up, which I did a second later, you'll see that the leaves on this side, they're actually going to print on the other side, the side that's next to the table as well. And you're going to see that in the finished piece. So here I am tying. And the, what I am tying with is with 
t-shirt yarn because it's got a little bit of stretch or give to it and I find I can make my bundles beautifully tight. It needs to be something that is really tight. These are direct contact prints. And then when I have my piece ready to go into the pot, here you can see my 40 litre aluminium pot and you can see I have a selection of bundles about to go in. I'm actually using a propane burner and I was, I'm processing outside. It wasn't too windy this day. And I wanted just to make sure that, um, you know, I, I was processing outside in a well ventilated area because there was no wind. If I was processing inside, I would have had a window open and I would recommend you wear a mask because of course there is steam produced. So my bundle went into the pot and Agnes has a question about how long do you use your eucalyptus in the pot? If it's eucalyptus in the pot liquid, Agnes, for four or five sessions. But there are different lengths of processing times then for the different vegetation. But for that onion skin piece with the rose leaves, et cetera, that only needed between two and two and a half hours. That's it. So the next image is when I took it out of the pot after I think I did two hours and 20 minutes and I unrolled the bundle. So now can you see I've rolled the bundle away from me. So the bit at the bottom of the image, it's got the copper pipe. Then there is some modification of color. Let me make, yeah. So where the pipe was in contact, you can see that as sort of a golden um, band of color. That's where the copper pipe was in direct contact with the felt as I rolled up. And you can see how beautifully those leaves have printed there. Um, don't be surprised when you start opening bundles if they look quite black on the outside. That's normal from your dirty pot liquid. Now I've opened it out and I'm just taking the leaves off the felt. And you can see already that there are some beautiful prints here on this side. So there's the blackberry, the rose, and what we call sycamore. It's Acer pseudoplatanus, or in America, it's called sycamore maple. And this is the onion skin side. And you can see clearly on this side that there's a darker line up the middle. And I'm just going to get my cushion again. I'll get a different cushion, it's a bigger one. So when you eco print and you do a mirror image, if there's a darker line or any sort of a line up the middle, that's the line that's coming from the color of your pot liquid. So in the case of this piece, it's quite dark. So that shows I had a good chunk of rusty metal in the pot, but the onion skin prints are vibrant. And here is the onion skin side. We need to wash and finish our pieces. So maybe I'll just remove that for one minute and just have a little chat about how you finish your pieces. And then I'll go back to the images and I will discuss the cellulose as well. So um, it's important that anything that you eco print, you need to, to wash it very well until any natural dye and pot liquid that has not been absorbed by the fabric washes out. And if your fabric has been in direct contact with rusty metal, you also need to neutralize the effects of the rust so that it doesn't eat into your fabric. So if you go back to the preparation of the fabric, which was in, in boot camp day two, I recommend a gentle soap such as an olive oil soap for preparing your fabric in the first place. So that's the soap that you also wash your fabric with afterwards. You can wash it by hand or you can wash it on the wool cycle in the machine, or if it's linen or cotton, you can do, it doesn't have to be the wool cycle. But if you've wrapped around rusty metal, I just would give your pieces a quick rinse and then you get either bicarbonate of soda or baking powder and you put a teaspoon or so, a little bit more if it's a big piece, a little bit less if it's a light scarf about half a teaspoon for a light silk shirt. And I would say a whole teaspoon for a linen shirt that had um, 
been dipped in rust water and was wrapped up on a pipe. And you just make, put that bicarbonate of soda or baking powder into warm water and just leave your pieces soaking for half an hour, 15 minutes to an hour. Um, half an hour is a good length of time and then proceed to wash them with the olive oil soap. And that just helps prevent the rust continuing to have a reaction with your fabric. To be honest, I sometimes, well, I always do that with them, but very early on I didn't neutralize, but I think it's better to do so. And if you're going to sell work, it is important to finish them properly. So we'll just go back to this. So here's the piece before it was washed out. And here it is after it's been washed out and ironed. So that is um, that is the finished piece of felt on the onion skin side. And for those of you who are wet felt makers, that squiggly white detail on the surface, that's actually coming from Tencel. Um, it's a, um, a cellulose fabric that doesn't absorb the color as much. So you can see those squiggly lines on the surface. And here is the reverse side, and there's no tensile on this side. So it's a much flatter, matte looking piece. So you can see on the bottom right hand side of the screen, that's where the copper pipe was in contact with the fabric. And then you can see the leaves. And then under the string, I actually put a eucalyptus cordata, one of my favorite uh, leaves, and that has printed, and you can see the stripy marks from the string. So that is the simplicity of the eco printing process on wool, on silk, on cashmere, on any sort of um, any sort of garment that is protein based. Now, if you want to eco print on your cellulose fabric, we discussed yesterday that you were going to use homemade rust water, and. I just want to give you a couple of pointers about how I make mine, but I would say to you, um, mine here, because I have a big cast iron pot in this case, it looks very, um, you know, very rusty color, very warm orange color. Rust water often doesn't look this color at all when you're making it at the beginning. It might even look a little bit gray or it might almost look clear. That doesn't mean it won't work. So if you want to eco print cellulose fabric, that would be linen, cotton, ramy. You can treat rayon, bamboo, tencel, lyocell, all those sorts of fabric in the same way. And they all can do with the 40 second rust water soak. So to make your rust water, if you don't have a cast iron pot like that, I leave that pot, I, I have loads of them outside, no lid on and um you know rainwater collects in them and i just dunk my pieces in those but you don't want leaves to get into the pot as well because then you're going to have a reaction with the tannin in the leaves and you don't get the same effect from the rust water so if you don't have a rusty metal um cast iron pot like that i recommend that you just use a bucket and you put put some big chunks of rusty metal in the bucket you put some vinegar in the bucket and you you put some water in and there's no real recipe for how much except if you're in a rush you can just cook your your <laughs> rusty water in a, a, a metal pot and you can make it very quickly boil it for an hour or two let it cool and that rust water will be ready to use but if you have more time i would say three or four days in a bucket uh, if you're in a warm climate will be perfect and leave it somewhere warm and um, you just then dip your fabric into the rust water. And when I dip my cellulose fabric into the rust water, it looks, it, it looks really dirty and it's got flecks of that rusty metal look on it. I don't worry about that, I just continue. And then what I do is I've already prepared the fabric with the, hot, with the soap, uh, etc. like I discussed yesterday, you do not need to, to use vinegar. So I put gloves on. I always wear gloves when I'm dipping my hands into the rust water. So make sure you have gloves on, dip your fabric in, dunk it right under the water and count to 40. Count slowly, but don't leave it in for longer. 
take it out, give it a really good squeeze. You don't need to sprinkle it with vinegar. And then the bundling process is exactly the same as it was for the felt. But one thing that I didn't mention with the felt um, is that leaves give a different print, whether they're with the front of the fabric um, against the front of the leaf against the, the fabric or the back. And in fact, if I add this here, uh, one second now. Yeah, here's a good example. So these are cotinus leaves um, or smoke bush. These are cotinus leaves on organic HEMP. And you can see that some of the prints are really dark. They're purpley black and some of them are more of an outline. So the, ooh, that seemed to go by itself. I didn't touch that, Never mind. Um, the purpley, the prints here, the purpley dark color is where um, the back of the leaf, the underneath of the leaf made contact with the fabric and the lighter outline is where the front made contact with the fabric. So I'm just going to check questions now and then I will um, just show you some images of pieces that have been printed with, with just talk about some other vegetation and then I want to just take you through um, an onion skin top or the an onion skin jumper as well. Okay, comments, okay. Um, no, Laurie, Laurie is asking if only eucalyptus and onion skins go in the dirty pot. I'm sorry, maybe she's wondering then if cellulose wrapped with cotinus rose or blackberry goes in a different dirty pot. No, I'm sorry. Maybe I wasn't clear enough, Laurie. The dirty pot liquid is what the onion skins and the eucalyptus are going into. That's the liquid that we process the bundles in. Bundles with any sort of thing in them go into that liquid. So it's not two different pots. You have one pot, one dirty pot. And you may have a pot with rust water. That's a separate thing. That's for dipping your cellulose fabric in. But the contents of your pot are what you're processing your bundles in. And those bundles, they can be any fabric and they can have any sort of vegetation. And then um, in relation to making the, to adding skins into the pot, Beatrice is asking red or brown or red and brown, can you mix them in the pot? Um, absolutely, you can mix them in the pot. When you're using them as eco printing vegetation, sometimes there's a little difference in color from the different colored skins, but you won't notice any difference from them when you put them into the pot. Um, Helena is saying you have mentioned cellulose before, but it wasn't clear what it means. Helena, if if you go back, I think to day one, boot camp day one, I do explain more cellulose fabric comes from a plant and when we're eco printing the fabric either originates from an animal such as silk wool cashmere mohair or from a plant such as cotton linen ramey hemp i'm not saying that word in case i get flagged on youtube so cellulose fabric comes from a plant protein fabric comes from an animal um, Liz is asking about the preparation for linen garments. Liz, all the preparation is in boot camp video too, but it's basically giving them a good wash. And um, one second. So you prepare your cellulose fabric with a ver with a hot wash. I use olive oil soap, and if you have it, you can also add a teaspoon of sodium carbonate or washing soda and you give it a good wash and following that you soak it in plain water overnight. Then you dip your wet fabric for 40 seconds into the rust water before you squeeze out the excess liquid and you proceed to do your, your um, bundling. Okay, I'm just gonna run down through questions. So if you have a question about anything I've said up to now, ideally about the content today, Billy, yes. When you refer to putting cotton, fa cotton fabric in a dip of rust water, yes, the you've got a pot or a bucket of rust water 
And then you have a dirty pot, which is what you eco print in. They're two separate things. Excellent question, Suzette. Suzette is asking, can you use the same piece of rusty metal many times? Yes, over and over and over and over again. I have an old iron, you know, that would have been used for ironing clothes years ago. And I have a piece of string on that. And I just lift it in and out of my pot liquid. When I want to make the pot uh, give darker prints, I add it in. And when I want uh, lighter prints, I take it out. So Ginta is asking, could you please recommend the outdoor stove? My stove there was a camp chef stove. I got it in Sacramento. Well, in fact, I got it in Auburn in California and I flew home from Sacramento with it as hand baggage dismantled. Um, so it's just any sort of a pot. I recommend gas or wood burning and something that will bring your water to a high temperature. So when I say you process in your pot for, an, for two hours or two and a half hours, you need to have your pot liquid boiling, not just a light steam. And then you put your bundles in and you pop them in under the water. Now, I'm not trying to push the $49 um, product that I'm going to launch when the boot camp is over. I'm not pushing that on anybody. But if you are enjoying this and you would like to work with me for eight days and have me help you, with everything and if you want to see videos proper professional videos of me working and see my my setup and see garments getting printed including ones with long sleeves from start to finish that is going to be something that i will be sharing but for a free boot camp we only have a certain amount of time and it's just impossible to share videos of every last thing okay okay fantastic now, this is interesting. There are some people here who are calling these um, yellow onions, yellow onions. But Tammy's on my page, brown onions. That's what I call them as well, Tammy. So it's just interesting. And Anne is saying yellow or brown onions. Um, just really interesting. Everybody has different uh, names. So then white onions, I'm assuming if you call those ones yellow, white onions have a papery white outside. I've never got prints from them or from garlic you know the skin of garlic um oh that's interesting um claudette is saying winter onions oh really interesting okay so um Mylon is asking is it necessary to cover the bundle with dirty pot liquid and i would say 99 times out of 100 absolutely yes it is totally necessary what happens is if your whole bundle, let's just say this lip thing, the whole of that is not in the pot liquid. Um, the bottom of the bundle will have a different amount. It will have different color and it will have a different amount of heat or energy in the pot. So you'll get stripes on your piece. Now, you might want that as a design element when you have more experience. But honestly, it's not a good idea not to have the bundles totally submerged. I would say it's essential to have them totally submerged. Marianne is saying, I've dried rose leaves and petals. Do I need to hydrate before using? Marianne, I cannot urge you enough. Don't even bother with your pe rose petals. Flowers need mordants traditional powdered mordants to give good prints unless you're doing something more advanced such as tannin and iron reactions without mordants that's something that's way ahead uh, and not suitable for this but even so I, I usually don't use flowers because I don't get good prints from them so you need to use traditional chemicals to fix the color of flower prints with rose leaves if you flattened your rose and dried them flat and putting them in water will reconstitute them easily I would say go ahead for me they just curl up too much so I wouldn't bother drying them but if you find if they're nice and flat yes by all means but tough leaves such as oak and sycamore that I would dry if I needed to um those I would just soak them in warm water for a short while and any eucalyptus leaves you can soak them in in water and they will be brilliant um, they reconstitute really easily. Carolyn is asking, is the bundle immersed in the liquid of the dirty pot or steamed above? Um, yes, Carolyn, it is immersed. And 
there isn't you can steam it but for for all the prints that i'm showing you every single garment or piece that i've shown you throughout the workshop not one of them has been steamed they have all gone into the really dirty pot liquid but if i just go back to um one of the images i shared yesterday uh, and in fact, I've got the wrong slides up, so I can't even find it. But see this piece here, um, Carolyn, even this piece, like this was submerged in the rust water and it looked really brown. And then it was submerged in the dirty pot liquid. But after it was then washed out until the water ran clear, all that brown background color was gone. So yes, you um, submerge them rather than steam them for the best results. And um, that's what I'm sharing with you here. So if you don't submerge them, you may not get such good prints. Elise is asking, did she miss something? She is saying that she thought I threw some rusty metal into the pot, I do. And then are we rolling our fabric around that? Elise, I didn't actually um, discuss what pipes do, but I have a separate YouTube video about that. So if you have a look about pipes, string, et cetera, um, that will just tell you, you get different effects from the different pipes. If you roll around copper, it's a more orangey gold effect where the copper touches the fabric. And if you roll around iron, you get a darker effect. If you roll around a wooden dowel, like a brush handle or something, you don't get the same modification of color. So yes, um, working in the eco print, the dirty pot, I do like to use pipes, metal pipes as well. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go down through the questions. So if you can just stop asking questions now, then I'll answer the ones that are here and then I'll, I'll open it out again in another little while. Uh, Sharon is asking, when you dip the cellulose fiber in rust water, yes, it needs to be wet, Sharon. You soak it overnight in plain water, and then it goes into the rust water. If it's wool or protein fabric, it soaks in the water and it gets a, a, a vinegar sprinkle. If it's cellulose, it soaks in the water and it gets the rust dip. And the reason for the soaking in the water overnight is that the fibers start to sort of, um, they absorb the liquid a bit and they expand. So when you go to EcoPrint, they're already expanded and they receive the natural color better. Um, so Nicola's asking, is sodium carbonate washing soda? Uh, it's not identical, Nicola, but they both work. And then I process the bundles of the I process every bundle at a boil. So I bring the water up to a boil and once the pot is boiling, I drop the bundles into the pot. So I want to see a bubble on the surface of the water. After I put the bundles in, I put the lid back on, I bring the pot up to that heavy boil and then I keep it at the temperature for the length of time I'm choosing to print for. So things like onion skins and rose leaves and blackberry, we'll look at a few images maybe. And I'll tell you how long they would take um, to process. So these are blackberry leaves. And blackberry leaves are really good printers in the dirty pot. And um, here they are on lamb's wool. And in fact, I would have preferred more rusty metal in the pot because I'm not personally as keen on that sort of olivey green color running up the center line. I would have preferred that to be darker. But you can see that the blackberry leaves have printed well. And tough blackberry leaves like those ones, I would leave those bundles in the pot for two and a half hours. And the same with rose leaves. But if they were very, very um, young blackberry or rose, I would leave them in for only two hours. Um, most vegetation doesn't um, print very well when it's young, but blackberry and rose does tend to. You can also try raspberry leaves. They can print beautifully. And the back of the leaf gives a stronger print than the front. And then if you don't have access to rose leaves, why not ask a florist for uh, rose leaves? Now, Martina is asking a question here. Should she pre-treat the vegetation? Is that necessary? And um, the answer is 
I don't pre-treat it. The only time I, I have done, so uh, the very, very odd time, if I have leaves that are not giving as strong a print as I like, I might soak them for a short while in my rust water. I would put rust water into a plastic um, or rubber bucket and I would just soak the leaves or into a, into a pot. I wouldn't put the leaves into the rust water. I would just remove some of the rust water and soak them and that will help them get, get darker. But you don't need to do anything else. Um, I see, Aura, you have a question about um, washing the pieces out afterwards. Shona, remind me to answer that question at the end again, please. Um, washing soda and, and soda ash are not the same thing. Um, So Beatrice has a good question here, which I'll pop up in a minute. Um, let me just move on here. So th this here, these leaves are Acer Suda Platinus. Um, we call it sycamore here in Ireland, um, but also known as the sycamore maple in the United States. And the reason I give botanical names is that sometimes people in England think, well, in England, usually the sycamore is a sycamore, but the plane tree, often people think the plane tree is sycamore because in other countries you, you may say plane, but this is Acer pseudoplatinus. It, it's a sort of maple, in fact. And if I position some leaves up and some down, you can see that darker leaf, that's where the underneath of the leaf has been in contact with the fabric. It releases more of the natural dye. And the lighter prints then are where the um, where the front of the leaf has been in contact with the um, with the fabric. And I'll share one other leaf. This now this gives excellent prints. This is Cornus alba Siberica, and that should be S I B I R I C A. Um, the common name is dogwood, and these dogwood leaves give absolutely stunning prints in the dirty pot. Okay, I'm going to, um, I, I want to share just, um, oh, hang on a second, sorry, one second. I think, um, somehow I've managed to to not attach a series of slides maybe I, oh no actually maybe I have them okay um so what I'd like to do now before I answer some more questions um I'm going to just show um this jumper I got it in a thrift store a week ago and this was a cashmere silk and wool blend jumper it was a pink polo neck and I posted um a couple of shots of it up on Instagram and a little reel. So these, the two of these, they're a little bit quick because I had used the um, time lapse facility on my phone when I was recording them. But I just wanted to share them with you. So I'm going to add this first one to the stream. And this is me um, laying out the piece. I'm not actually sure if I talk while it's on screen, if you'll hear me, but I think you will. So the jumper is damp. I sprinkled it with vinegar and I'm putting onion skins and a little sprinkling of achiote or annatto seeds on this, but I'm folding it back and forwards in a diagonal way. And I decided I'd also shove some onion skins into the polar neck part of it, the turtleneck part, because that's going to be turned down afterwards. And it may look like this isn't very flat. Like if there were leaves in this, it would be very flat. But because I roll up tightly, it crushes the onion skins. And because it gives a more abstract design, I'm not so concerned um, that it doesn't look that flat on the table. But you can see me putting my hand down and making sure that the package is really tight. I tie it up really tightly and I pop some onion skins underneath the string as I'm working. And these then are going to give some prints under the tie marks because I don't want to have that big area where it's all just the dark, dirty pot liquid with no other interest. And it's as simple as that. You need to make sure to put plenty of string on your piece uh, when you're tying it. I would say that you need it every centimeter or half inch, less than half an inch. Otherwise, your bundle won't be tight enough. Anyway, that's bundling it 
And here, this one is much quicker. This is opening the bundle. And this is just removing the vegetation. And I like to make sure that I remove every single piece of vegetation when the piece is damp. This was boiled for about an hour and 20 minutes. And um, if you don't take all the vegetation off as you um, unbundle it, what happens is it's almost like the vegetation dries and sticks into the wool or whatever you're working on. It's not as bad on linen or cotton, but it's particularly obvious on felt and silk and wool. So pick off all the vegetation. And I'm going to um, show you me wearing the jumper this week. So it took the color really well. The pink is now not as vibrant now that it's washed out and neutralized. It was processed for about an hour and 20 minutes. And so these are just a few images of me walking out in the country wearing the jumper. So you can see where there are those sort of diagonal lines on it. That's where the tie that I, I rolled it on the diagonal. So those lines are where the outside of the bundle, the ends of the bundle were in the dark pot liquid. And that's the back of it. So even though it's silk, cashmere and wool, that was boiled in the dirty pot. And people are just um, are just wondering, you know, can you print on delicate fabrics? Absolutely. And it didn't shrink because it's wrapped and tied so tightly and not agitated. OK, so I'm going to go quickly through some of these questions and um, yeah, and then we're going to call it quits for the for the boot camp. OK. When you do your bundle, your piece of fabric, it's just damp, Beatrice, not wet. So it's been soaking overnight in the water. I squeeze the excess out so it's damp. And then I just sprinkle it with the vinegar or dip it in the rust water and squeeze it out. Um, so. Dipping leaves in rust water will have an effect and it's not something, th this is the foundation of eco printing and I want you to have successful results. With experience, you can decide to dip them in rust water and get darker results. I really don't do it myself now at all. I did when I started, but I don't anymore. Um, so Beatrice is saying she's done some bundles and she thinks the fabric was either too wet, too thin or boiled for too long. And um, that's exactly the sort of thing, um, Beatrice, that in the in the event that I'm about to announce now in a second, because I really need to to do that. And then I have another meeting again tonight. Um, that's the kind of thing we could discuss and you could share images. But since I don't haven't seen your pieces, I can't tell you. It is always possible that pieces are too wet and then the prints are not um, crisp and clear. But it's most likely that you did not boil it for too long. It's most likely your fabric was not too thin and you didn't boil it for too long. It's most likely you used the incorrect vegetation that wouldn't print and that the fabric may have been wet as well. And let's just see now. Um, red onions um, print absolutely beautifully. Um, I actually prefer the colors from brown onions. They give a more vibrant gold and rich rusty brown colors. The red onions give more of a purple color and then sometimes a slightly greener color, but I like the color from brown better. Um, Sabina's asking, will I repeat the $49 experience or will it be available later if I pay for it when you launch it? So tomorrow I'm going to actually launch it officially I'll just explain like in two sentences in a few minutes about it tonight. Um, I'm going to launch it officially tomorrow. Um, I'm just making it available tonight for those of you who've really enjoyed this and want to actually study with me for a full eight days and have the whole experience and have feedback with the pieces and follow the system. Um, but it will be available for... Um, it will be available to everybody who, who registers now for about six weeks. There's going to be a Facebook group to support it and, and the content on, on the library and the learning platform. It won't be released again until sometime in the spring. So if you want to do it, it will be available for six weeks, Sabina. You don't have to do it exactly at the same time as me. And then this, this 
particular thing that I'm launching will not then be available again until sometime, you know, um, maybe March or so. I'm not quite sure when, but that sort of time. Um, okay, so um, now, so in New Zealand, those are called brown or, huh, pokey kohi onions. <laughs> the place in New Zealand, they grow them commercially. Um, okay. So Beatrice is asking, does the time of boiling depend on the size of the fabric? No, not whatsoever. The time of processing depends on the vegetation that you're using. And I would recommend that unless you use eucalyptus leaves that you know give you a red print, that you boil eucalyptus leaves for four to five hours, but every other leaf for two to two and a half hours. And that's the sort of thing I'll be giving, you know, information about different leaves, et cetera, obviously in the event next week. Um, I'm going to just repeat the neutralizing process. So once the bundles are removed from the dirty pot, if they've been rolled on copper, on wood, rolled up by themselves, they don't have to be rolled on anything. You don't need to neutralize them. You just go straight ahead and you wash them with your olive oil or your gentle soap until the water runs clear. And then if you have rolled on an iron or a rusty metal pipe, that's when you neutralize. So just give them a quick rinse under the tap to get the worst of the black water out or the, the dirty pot liquid. And then you're just going to make a solution with some warm water and um, let's say if it's a scarf, a quarter of a teaspoon or half maximum of half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda or baking powder. That's the maximum. And you leave it in there for 15 minutes to half an hour. And then you go ahead and you wash your piece until the water runs clear. Okay. So um, I honestly think, um, oh, we have one question. Lynn has a question, which I will answer in a, que in a second for you, Lynn. Right, I honestly think this is gonna have to be the end of questions now, but um, each bundle knows that they don't have to be wrapped on a copper pipe. That happened to be one on copper. Um, my the pink jumper was wrapped on cast iron and you get copper pipes from either a plumber or from your hardware store and then um helene is asking how long do the garments in the pot um, <coughs> it depends on the vegetation so if it's um rose leaves or blackberry or raspberry or onion skins any of those softer leaves um two to two and a half hours Two and a half hours is my recommendation. But if you're using eucalyptus leaves that you are not sure whether they give good prints, you need to do four to five hours. Um, okay. Um, so Lynn was asking about this piece here. So this is actually, it's something called fireweed often in Canada or America. It's rose bay willow herb. It's not rose willow, Lynn. It's rose bay willow herb. And um, that is um, what the plant is. It's a weed here in Ireland as well, but it's a very beautiful, um, a beautiful print. And um, yep, that's it. So rose bay willow herb. Okay. And Sarah has a question, is viscose fabric cellulose? And viscose is a man-made fabric and it's made from wood pulp and you treat it as if it is cellulose because it comes from a plant. Um, so yeah, so there's a few things that are coming up really quickly and um, yeah, birch leaves, absolutely nada, zero prints for me. Uh, Japanese maple, zero prints for me. But Japanese maple de depend on where um, they grow because I have a friend who gets very good prints from them. And this is the final, the final question that I'm going to answer here. And this is, but what is dogwood? So I need to find that picture again. The, here it is, Cornus alba siberica. That's the name of the plant, but it's commonly called dogwood. And it should be S-I-B-I-R-I-C-A. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that ends the three day boot camp. I will try and answer questions afterwards if you leave them as a comment. But if you have enjoyed the boot camp, I'm going to just ask, um, I'm going to actually put a banner up on the screen here. Now, I am not pushing anybody whatsoever to join this, but I have decided because there are many people who would really like to work with me and are asking, do I offer online workshops still? And they don't necessarily want to do a longer ongoing thing, such as join my subscription club, the Eco Print and Wet Felt Club, or um, they might want to dip their toe in the water. And also the Eco Print and Wet Felt Club is, a, is an investment in time and money in yourself and your textile practice. So if you're not sure if eco printing is for you, I wanted to offer something that was more affordable, that would give a little insight about what working with me would be like. It's an event that's going to happen over a period of eight days, starting on Monday. So it's an eight day eco printing, upcycle your clothing in the dirty pot challenge. So it's an eco printing challenge, but it's going to be run it's like a cross between a challenge and a workshop. I'm going to explain tomorrow exactly what I'll be doing. But basically for the group, there will be um, a whole series of content that I will break down and there will be something every single day so that the whole process is broken down and it makes it easy for you to do one thing at a time and not jump ahead. I'll do a short live each morning which will then be recorded and I'll broadcast it live to anybody who decides to join. Um, but I will, it will be uploaded into our library, the membership library in Kajabi, which is my online teaching platform. And so every day I will discuss a new aspect of the eco printing in the dirty pot. But I have a whole series of fantastic videos to share with you where you see every last thing you see me you know, I'm getting my pot ready. I've got my rust water. I'm doing a whole series of different garments. I'm doing a flat, a silk flat piece. So if you're interested in just not upcycling garments, but you would like to eco print with me, this is also perfect. But I know many people have questions about how to fold garments, how to work out where the tie marks will go, all sorts of questions. Like if you've enjoyed this free boot camp and you have loads of questions, I will be able to answer them in the challenge. So I would invite you to join me tomorrow at 6 p.m. if you'd like to learn more about the challenge. Um, uh, but all I can say is the information will be available to you for a total of six weeks. There will be a private Facebook group where you meet all the other members and that will be open for the six weeks. And then for the eight days of the actual boot camp, I will be answering your questions in the Facebook group. Or if you ask me questions within our club library, I'll be uploading new information. And then on the ninth day, we're going to have a bit of a party and a kind of a celebration. And I can give you um, a little um, graduation certificate if you are interested, because sometimes people are interested in saying, they've studied or they've done X, Y, or Z. So I will be able to do a digital certificate for everybody who has um, who has participated, if that is something that they would like. I haven't quite worked out the logistics of that yet, but it will be possible. Um, okay, so um, I hope you have all enjoyed um, tonight. I will answer more of your questions tomorrow. Shauna will just, we'll have a look at the questions and um, I'll see if I can answer some of them tomorrow. Oh, I see some people. Thank you so much uh, joining um, the eight days. Thank you so much. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, look, I'm really um, happy that you have enjoyed this. And um, I will explain tomorrow about, you know, I'm, I might take a, a few little um I can't even think now. Sorry, I, I'm, t I'm tired and I have a meeting that I have got to go to now as well. So I think the best thing is just tune back in tomorrow. I'll explain more about how the how the challenge is actually running. And I might show you one or two sneak peeks at some of the garments that I print during the challenge. And you see all the videos. I've had them all professionally recorded with the absolute breakdown of every last thing. So you can see how hot my pot is, how I put my pieces in, how I take them out, what they look like when they're washed, how to iron them, the whole lot. Okay, thank you all so much.
over and out from Clashine, and it has been an absolute pleasure. And don't forget, if you would like to join me for that challenge, you will get eight days of my undivided attention as a group, and it's going to be really good fun. And by the end of those eight days, you will have some fantastic eco-printed uh, pieces to uh, show to your friends. Thanks a million, over and out.